Amen. We give God the praise, give God the glory. We give God the honor on this blessed Wednesday night. Amen. God has been good to us, been kind to us, been gracious to us to bring us back to the house of worship once again. We say welcome to you, all of you. Welcome to Mount Carroll Missionary Baptist Church, 3835 Whitewater Road, right here in the city of Valdosta, Georgia. We're glad you come, amen, to worship with us on tonight for Wednesday night word. Amen. To hear a word from the Lord. God is good to us. Well, we ought to be glad about it. Amen. We certainly ought to be glad about what the Lord is doing. We invite you to share uh, that we're on, amen, a live stream on tonight. Uh, our link is www.worshipwithmtcalvary.org forward slash live, L-I-V-E. That's www.worshipwithmtcalvary.org forward slash live. Amen. Also, you can also give an offering if you desire to do so by uh, clicking on the link or downloading the application Givelify to your phone at www.worshipwithmtcalvary.org and forward slash giving, G-I-V-I-N-G. We encourage you to join us every Wednesday night for Wednesday Night Word at 7 o'clock p.m. for 7 o'clock p.m. Also, our Sunday school uh, conference called Sunday School each and every Sunday at 9.20 a.m., 9.20 a.m., each and every Sunday. You can dial the number 701-802-5337. That's 701-802-5337. And you can also uh, use the access code 683-1205 in the pound symbol. That's 683-1205 in the pound symbol. Please remember to mute your phones during the conference call so that if you have a question or a comment, you can unmute it and then make those as necessary. We're just glad that you're here with us on tonight. Our Sunday services, each and every Sunday live stream here at Calvary, every Sunday at 10.15 a.m., 10.15 a.m. Come on and join us, amen, by the same link, www.worshipwithmtcalvary.org forward slash live each and every Sunday for our morning worship at 10 o'clock, 10.15 10:15 a.m. on this coming Saturday, on this coming Saturday, uh, here at Calvary, the Sister Sister Ministry will have their prayer uh, conference call on this Saturday at 6 a.m. That's right, 6 a.m. So please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, if you really want to join them, you can join them too. Amen. It's open up to all that want to join them on this coming uh, Saturday at 6 a.m. for the Sister Sister ministry of conference call you can dial that same number 701-802-5337 at 701-802-5337 and the access code is 6831205 and the pound symbol for our sister ministry on this coming saturday at 6 a.m amen where there be a special you don't you don't want to miss it you just want to join them on this coming saturday that you can be blessed and highly favored of the lord Amen. We're so glad to come back with you again on tonight. Amen. We're going to complete our series on tonight that we've been discussing for the last couple of uh, lessons on tonight. So let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, we just give you praise. God, we just give you glory. We give you honor being able to come back to your house of worship. We thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for bringing us back. Amen. God, at this present time, to give, look your name up to get in your word, to understand your word, to get clarity in your word, oh, Father God. And Lord, we pray, God, right now that your word would reach out and touch somebody, heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Just lift them up, strengthen them up, Father God. Bless them what they stand in the need of right now, God. Move in a mighty way. Just have your way, oh, God. And Lord, we thank you for it. We'll lift you up. We'll magnify you. You're so worthy. We praise you, and we give you glory. We give you honor. God, look on each and every one that's tuning in to hear this. Uh, an online stream of Father God. Hear this broadcast. Hear this telecast of Father God. This is what see and hear your word. Just bless them indeed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and give you praise and give you glory and give you honor. Yes, for the last couple of lessons, we've been talking about the right and the wrong use of the tongue. The right and wrong use of the tongue. Our basic scripture will be coming out of James, the third chapter, and verses 1 through 12. That's James, the third chapter, verses 1 through 12. And I encourage you to read the entire chapter of James 3 in your Bible reading time. But just for a few scriptures on tonight, we're just going to share a few with you on tonight. And then we're going to get in the last portion of this lesson, the right and the wrong use of the tongue. Amen. The right and the wrong use of the tongue. It says verse number one in James, the third chapter, verse one said, my brethren, 
be not many masters knowing that we shall receive a greater condemnation. For many things we offend all, and if any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us when we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, they are different of fierce winds, yet as they turn about with a very small hem, whether soever the government listed. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold, a great matter of little fire kindleth, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body and seek, setteth on the fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and birds and serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. And out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, fig? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh? So that's the word of God, verses 1 through 12 of James, the third chapter. Thank God for the reading and hearing of his most holy word. Yes, so the right and the wrong use of the tongue. The right and the wrong use of the tongue. We talked about the tongue has the power to direct. It has the power to direct. The tongue has the power to destroy. And then we talked about, about the tongue has the power to delight. It has the power to direct, to destroy, and to delight. The tongue is a small member of our body, but it is a strong member, amen, that can destroy a whole lot of things or build up a whole lot of things. We talked about the tongue, the wrong use of the tongue. Blaspheming God. When we're tempted to do wrong, speaking hypocritically about somebody, expressing discrimination between rich and poor fellow believers, <clears throat> and speaking unsympathetic to those in need, boasting and flattering, thus causing destructive fire, grumbling against each other, swearing and blaspheming. These are the wrong use of the tongue. But we want to use our tongue in the right way. We want to use our tongue that God gave us in the right way. For the scripture remind us that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. You can speak life or you can speak death in your tongue. So we want to use the tongue in the right direction. And so we want to know tonight that we want to make sure that uh, we want to use our tongue the right way, the right use of the tongue, not the wrong use, but we want to get an understanding what the right use of the tongue is on tonight. Number one, we said our tongue, the right use of our tongue is to praise God. We ought to use our tongue to praise God and give God glory and give God honor. Why? Because he has been good to us. That's why the scripture says in James 3 and 9, that with bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God, which is one translation. We, we use our tongue to praise our Heavenly Father. We use our tongue to praise our Heavenly Father. When you use your tongue to give praise even to someone in your family, it makes them feel good. When you use it, amen, to, to beat them down, it destroys them. It, it takes something out of them. It takes the life and the breath out of them. But when you use the tongue for praise, it builds up. It, it, it magnifies the person or the thing that, amen, you are saying praise and you appreciate and you're showing gratitude to. So we, uh, we give God the praise and we give God the glory and we give God the honor. We use our tongue to praise our Heavenly Father. We should be doing this every day. We can read Psalms 148, 149, and 150, and certainly 150 let us know for surely that we let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. We ought to use our tongue in a good way to give praise unto God. When we use our tongue, amen, to give praise unto God, that is the right use of our tongue. Secondly, another right use of our tongue is to pray to God, to pray to God. Yeah, to pray to God. Number one, 
We want to use our tongue to pray to God for wisdom. The Bible says in James 1, 5, and 6, if any man, if any of you like wisdom, let him what acts of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid, unbraided thee not, and it shall be given him. But let him act in faith, not wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. So we want to use our tongue to pray to God for wisdom. We need God to give us wisdom in a day like this. You need wisdom to know when to talk, wisdom to know when to be quiet. Yeah, wisdom to know what to say. Wisdom to know when to speak. Amen. Just because you write don't mean you got to talk about what you think you write about. Just because you think you uh, in the right, it, sometimes it ain't the right time. It ain't, it ain't God's timing for you to say those things. So you have to ask God for wisdom even when you doing the right thing. Amen. We even you doing the right thing. So we have to, amen, use our tongue the right way and pray to God for wisdom. Everything may be lawful, but the Bible says it is not expedient. So you have to be have wisdom, amen, how to speak to people, how to talk to people, how to even correct people, how to do it in the spirit of love. That takes wisdom. And it don't come, it's not from a, a book in the library. It's not from a book, amen, at a school or a, a college. But it's a it's the Bible and the word of God teaching you what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. And only God can give you that wisdom, amen. Only God can give you that wisdom. Yes, it's some old fools. Y'all don't hear me. I say it's some old fools and it's some young, amen, wise folks. Amen. Just because you got great hair on your head don't mean you wise or you have great wisdom. Amen. It just means that you've been around a long time. You ought to learn better by now. But some people don't mean because you look at them because they got gray hair and they, they, they look older and they are older. Amen. Don't necessarily mean they got the wisdom that you need for your situation. You better pray to God for wisdom. James says, if any man lack wisdom, to ask of God. Don't ask for other folks, but you need to ask the Lord to give you that wisdom. And so you need to pray to God for wisdom. Use that tongue right. Amen. Use that tongue right. And then, uh, secondly, amen, we need to pray. Amen. Use our tongue right uh, for number two, for the help, for help for those in trouble. For help for those in trouble. Pray for wisdom. Pray for help for those in trouble. It says in James 5, 13 and 16, is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith. Yes, I say in the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise them up. And if you have committed any sin, they shall what? Be forgiving. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The affection and prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. We need to use our tongue in the right way. We need to pray for help for those in trouble. Amen. Some people just want to focus on themselves all the time. Amen. Just my, my foe and no more. Amen. My crew and that's it. Amen. My, my people and that's it. My, my party and that's it. Amen. My neighborhood and that's it. My church and that this. But you need to be praying for all the churches. Amen. Just don't pray for your particular denomination. Just don't pray for your particular uh, 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 body of baptized believers. But pray for God to move in all the churches and all the land, across the land. Pray for everybody. We need to use our tongue in the right way to pray for help for those that are in trouble. Yeah, you may not be in trouble now, but trouble might come knocking on your door and you might need somebody to pray for you because you can't pray for yourself. Amen. But you need to learn how to use your tongue in the right way to pray to God to help somebody else out of their trouble. When you pray for somebody else, when you pray for somebody else, then God can help you out of whatever you in. Don't you remember the story of Job when he prayed for his friend that when he began to pray for somebody else, then God began to turn his captivity around. Somebody need to hear this on tonight. Use your tongue in the right way to help pray for somebody else. You know, sometimes me and my wife, we drive down the road and uh, we drive down the road and we see people broke down uh, on the interstate when we're traveling sometimes. Uh, and, you know, uh, you, you look at them and you, you, you be looking, you know, but you need to be praying for them. Amen. Because, you know, you one day you might be stuck side the road and you might need somebody to come help you. Amen. Down the road on the road. So we all at one time or another need help from somebody else. 
we need help from somebody else. Yeah, we need to use our tongue in the right way. Use our tongue in the right way. Amen. To pray to God for wisdom, to pray to God for help for those in trouble. And thirdly, to pray for healing. Yeah, to pray for healing. Yeah, it's, it, it, now, you know, some people can be in trouble in their body, but then this is a specific prayer. Pray for healing. James 5 and 14, it says, the same what we read earlier, uh, similar to what we read earlier, verses 14 and 15, it says, any month sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, knowing them with him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. And if he committed any sin, they shall what be forgiven. That's some of the same uh, verse that we read in our second point about those in trouble, but for healing. We need to use our tongue in the right way to pray for those that need healing. Yeah, they need healing. Some people need healing for their physical body, but they still some need healing for their emotional bodies and for their mental bodies. Amen. For their mental, they need mental healing, they need emotional healing, and they need physical healing and spiritual healing. Amen. And so we need to use our tongue, amen, to, to begin to pray for people that need healing. God is the God is not limited in what he can do. Yeah, let's not box God in. You know, you, if you think, but well, on time you need to pray for somebody when they sick. No, they ain't always sick. They could be sick of some other stuff, y'all don't hear me. Amen. They could be sick of life in general, yes. They could be sick of uh, what's going on in their family. They can be sick of what's going on in their finance. They can be sick. Don't you know, amen, that if you ain't got no money and you ain't got no money coming, you will get sick. Because you begin to worry about things. You begin to be, get concerned about things. Amen. Stressed out about things. So we need to pray for healing, not just for the physical body, but for the spiritual body, for the emotional body, for, amen, the mental body. Some people's mind is wandering in a day like this. Even in this time, even in this uh, pandemic, their minds are wandering. And they need prayer for healing in their mind because, amen, people are taking their lives every day. The enemy is taking folks out in their mind, taking them out in their bodies, amen. And who's to say, you know, people say, well, it, the, this thing is just for a certain age, it's for a certain race, it's for a certain group. But honey, if you check the record, all people living here from all ages, from young, old, from white, black, from all Asian, from whatever country they're from, they leaving here and a lot of it is not even being reported. Y'all don't hear me. I said a lot of it is not even being reported. So you better put it in the hand of the Lord and pray for healing for this nation. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and what? Pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray for healing in the land and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Yeah, we need God to heal the land and heal not just the USA, but heal the world, heal the land. Anywhere water is, anywhere dirty is, anywhere trees is, anywhere the birds is, anywhere air blow. We need God to heal the land. And so we need to be praying, using our tongue in the right way for, for healing for the world and for the land. Amen. Even for your enemies, you need to pray for healing for them as well. Point number th four, amen, we talked about to pray, use our tongue to pray. It's amazing that we got so many points in here about using our tongue for prayer. Yeah, using our, not, our, not to use our tongue to complain, or to murmur, or to talk about somebody, but to use it to pray to God for wisdom, for those in trouble, for healing. And number four, for large requests. For large requests. James 5, 17 and 18 said, Eliza was a man subject to light passion as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed and the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit. Yeah, if you know anything, uh, we need, you need rain for anything to grow. You need rain. And then here he is asking for God for something to stop the rain and then go back and ask God to start the rain. Imagine if it just in your neighborhood, in your town, that it didn't rain for three years and six months, you know. It didn't rain for three years and six months. So you, you just in your water, your, your your grass is brown as the the dirt on the ground. Amen, amen. The, the, the amen. The the the, the 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 corn won't grow. The peas won't grow. Can't get nothing to grow. 
Imagine that for three and a half years, no rain. He asked God for something big. But then not only did he ask God for something big, but he came back and asked God for something larger than that. He said, then, Lord, let it start raining again. Good God of mine. Isn't it amazing? He asked God to stop the rain. He then came back and asked God to start the rain back. You got to be able to use your tongue for the right use to ask God to enlarge your territory. Yeah, stop, amen, putting God in a small box in the corner like God, like God can't do big things for you, great things for you, awesome things for you, mighty things for you, amen, outstanding things for you, extraordinary things for you. God can do what he says that he can do and he will do. He said he wants to bless us, amen, exceedingly, abundantly, you know, but whatever we can ask or think. He want to do great things. We we don't serve, amen, a, a limited God. Some people run out of stuff, but God ain't ran out of nothing yet. Amen. God still got everything that you need. And so don't limit God. Ask God for something great. Ask God for something big. Well, Lord, I don't, I, 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 I'll be satisfied that one of my children be saved. No, you need to ask God for all of them to be saved. Ask for, and a matter of fact, amen, just don't stop at your, amen, your children, but ask for your grandchildren. Some of them, and say, Lord, you know, when I'm going off the scene of time, bless my children, my children's children. Amen. That's asking God for large things. That's asking God for things that haven't even came to pass yet. They haven't even came to an existence. Yet. But you begin to stretch out and ask God and launch out into the deep. Amen. Some of us staying, amen, so close, amen, to the shore that we can't get our blessing out there in the deep. See, God wants us to go out and launch out into the deep, and we want to stay up there on the dock. Amen. But God want to give us, amen, our blessings out there. The blessings out there, amen, launched out in the deep. But we want to stay boxed in and tied up. We want to hang with this group of folks. You know, we want to hang with that group of folks. Amen. We want to do this, but we, want, we don't want to expand. We just want to stay small and comfortable. But you got to learn how to grow in the Lord and ask God to do something large for you. Use your tongue in the right way and ask God, amen, to do some large things for you. Do some great things for you. Do some big things for you. We don't serve a small God. We serve a great God. And if we serve a great God, some places you might not, amen, you can travel all over the world and there'll be some places you may never see because that's how big God made the world to be. And if you, amen, limit yourself to one town or one one county, the one little city, the one little, amen, diameter. You're not going to go anywhere. You're not going to see anything. You're not going to experience anything. But you've got to learn how to go out and stretch out into the deep and launch out into the deep and get those things that God has for you. So when you use your tongue in the right way, pray for the large requests. Pray for the large requests. Amen. Amen. You believe God. Now, you got to learn how to believe God. Amen. If you're doing right and you're giving your tithes and you're giving your offering and you're giving what you need to be given to the Lord, you ought to start asking God for some large requests. Amen. Stop, amen, asking God for a pinto blessing. I say, stop asking God for a pinto blessing and step out there and get a blessing that God got your name on it. Amen. He'll do what he said he'll do. Amen. We just don't serve a pinto God. Now, that's, that's what you want. That's what you want. That's what you need to drive. Some of y'all say, well, preacher, I don't even know what a pinto is. That's right, because you weren't born then. It's way back then. Something small and something small, but I come to tell you, God wants you to, amen, stretch out. So ask God for large uh, requests. Point number five says, uh, let us pray and use our tongue in the right way for black backsliders to be restored. For backsliders to be restored. James 5 and 19 and 20 says, Brethren, if any of you do error from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sin. It is our job to pray for those backsliders that they be restored it is our job those of us that have been restored and those that are born again believers it's our job you know don't just look at nobody and say well they they don't go to church no more they don't they don't do this no more. they back in the world stop talking about them start praying for them that god will restore them back to the body of Christ. That's what we need to do. We don't need to be putting them down, looking down on them. Because listen, listen, you might err one day. You might make some mistakes one day. You might be in the same situation they in. Just because you got it going on today don't mean tomorrow ain't going to come. Something ain't going to come your way. So we need to be careful how we down those that have backslid, those that went away from the Lord. We need to pray that God will bring them back to the fold. Amen. That God will restore them back to the fold. Because as the truth be told, somebody prayed for you. 
Yeah, somebody prayed for you. Somebody had you on their mind and took the time to pray for you and to help you along the way that you might be able to know the Lord and the pardon of your sin and come back to him. <clears throat> so on tonight, we learn how to use our tongue in the right way to praise God, to pray to God, and thirdly, to sing to the Lord. Yes, to sing to the Lord. Use our tongue to sing to the Lord. Yes, uh, we learn, amen, that we need to use our tongue to, to praise God, to Pray to God and to sing. James three, James five and thirteen says, "Any among you sick, let him pray, and as in the merry, let him sing what psalms." And then uh, Psalms fifty one and fourteen say, "Deliver me from a bloody guiltiness, O God, my God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness, and make the same resolution." We ought to use our tongue to sing unto the Lord. Amen. You ain't got that. Amen. I, I know. Amen. Some of us want to be perfect pitch and in and, and tune and all that. But when sometimes you can sing a melody to the Lord and the Lord know all about it. Amen. Amen. You might not be singing it so great as one of the great singers. Amen. In the church or in the world. But as long as you singing songs to the Lord, that's what matter. God don't hear that you off tune. God don't hear that you missed the note. But God, if you just singing to the Lord, it, he, he knows he just want to hear you sing from your heart. Amen. From your heart. That's what it's about from your heart. Amen. So we need to use our tongue to sing unto the Lord. Amen. And you know, God will give you a song sometime that you ain't heard in a long time. You just started singing it and it just does something on the inside. Just makes that connection with you and God and the Father. Y'all, amen. Be celebrating all by yourself because while you singing to the Lord and singing a sweet song, a melody to the Lord. Amen. Lastly, uh, we learned on tonight to use our tongue in a good way to praise God, to pray to God, to sing to the Lord, and lastly, to witness for the Lord. To witness for the Lord. Use our tongue, amen, in the right way, to witness for the Lord. This is not actually mentioned by James, but we must include it. Look at Psalms 107 and 2 says, Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. If the Lord doesn't save you, you ought to tell somebody else. If the Lord done help you, you ought to tell somebody else. If the Lord done lifted you, you ought to be a witness and tell somebody else. The song says, open your mouth and say something. Amen. Whatever God has done for you, turn some things around for you. You ought to, amen, be a witness and tell somebody else. I declare tonight, I got some eyewitnesses out there tonight that can testify. Amen. And open your mouth in the right way. You know, we want to tell all the bad stuff. Why can't we tell the good stuff that the Lord is doing for us? Amen. We want to tell what the devil done did and how he done beat you up and throw you side the road. Why don't you open your mouth up and witness and say, the Lord brought me out. The Lord turned the things around for me. The Lord blessed me indeed. The Lord showed up, baby, and he showed out. You ought to run tell that. Amen. And be a witness for the Lord. Acts 1 and 8 said we shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you that you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth. We ought to amen use our tongue in the right way to be a witness for the Lord. We ought to be able to testify that the Lord been good to us. How he brought us from a mountain home. Amen. You ought not to be amen in the church 50, 20 years and 50 years and, and all these years and you ain't got nothing to say good about the Lord, to witness about the Lord. Your life ought to be a witness. Sometimes you ought not have to say anything, but people ought to be able to look at your life and say there's something different about her. There's something different about him. Amen. Your life ought to witness that God has been good to you and that God has blessed you and keeps on blessing you over and over and over again. So we want you to begin to use your tongue in the right way. Use it in the right way. Use it to praise God. Use it to pray to God. Use it to sing to the Lord and use it to witness to the Lord. And when you begin to pray, use that tongue. Amen. When you just begin to pray, use that tongue. Ask God for William, wisdom. Ask God to, for help for, and for those in trouble. Ask God for healing. Ask God for large requests and ask God to save the backslider, to restore the backslider. Use your tongue from this day forward in the right way. It's so easy to go wrong. But it's, it's, it's a challenge to do the right thing. And so we encourage you tonight. We've seen that our tongues can be used in many bad ways and a number of good ways. And how can it can be controlled? Only by the Spirit of God, our tongue can be controlled. The Bible says that no man can tame the tongue. 
Amen. You said some things that, ooh, I didn't mean to say that. I, I, where did that come from? Because you can't, the devil can get in your tongue and cause you to destroy things. Amen. You know, you didn't mean to say that, but somebody said it, it was something in your heart that came out anyway. And so you have to be careful what you say with the tongue because somebody said, well, well, sticks and stone may hurt my bone, that saying, whatever they say, and but words will never help, but words do hurt. And words do destroy. Words do tear down. But words also can build. Words also can encourage. Words also can strengthen. Words also can comfort. So we need to use our tongue in the right way. Yes. Romans 6, 13 said, we are, we are exalted to offer the parts of our body to God as instruments of righteousness. Our hands, eyes, feet, and even our tongue. We offer that to the Lord. Our hands, our eyes, our feet, even our tongue. Have you ever given your tongue to the Lord for him to control? Have you ever given your tongue to the Lord for him to control? If you haven't, the day and the night is a good time to give your tongue to the Lord and let God control it that you can do good with the tongue, the right use of the tongue, the wrong and the right use of the tongue. We're glad that you have joined us on tonight here at the Greater Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church, 3835 White Water Road, right here in the city of Valdosta. We pray that you will join us again on for another Wednesday night word at seven o'clock p.m. Amen. Don't forget to share this, Amen, with someone else and let them know what's going on. That you may be able to encourage somebody, help somebody along the way. Don't forget for our sister sister ministry, they will have a conference call on this coming Saturday. This coming Saturday. At 6 a.m. That's right, 6 a.m. So join them at 701-802-5337. That's 701-802-5337. And the access code 683-1205 in the pound symbol. That's 683-1205 in the pound symbol. For the Sister Sister Ministry, amen, on this coming Saturday at 6 a.m. Call in and they may be blessed of the Lord. Certainly, we want to thank God for all, amen, for God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, to all our ministerial staff here at Calvary, to their spouses, and to my wonderful spouse, Lady Evelyn Diane Vincent, to our deacons, deaconess, mother, saints, and friends. We're just glad for all of you being a part of the Mount Calvary Church family. And certainly, we want to say on tonight and for this day, amen, to my lovely wife, happy, happy, happy birthday to her, celebrating, amen, 53 wonderful years here on planet Earth. Amen. We're so glad to say happy birthday to her. And we thank all of you that came out and celebrated with her. Amen. On this evening through the drive through. Amen. Celebration. God bless you. Keep you as our prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you tonight, God. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the opportunity to come and share the word with your people on tonight. And God, we pray that this word will touch their hearts, mind, soul, and spirit. That they will use their tongue in the right way. In the right way, God, give us a use it in the right way that you will get the praise, that you will get the glory, that you will get the honor in our lives, in our words, in our deeds. Oh, Father God, we honor you on today. We thank you for it right now. We thank you for these that are listening in, that are part of this telecast. And we thank you for them listening into the Greater Mount Cabin Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you for this avenue, God, that you have made available to us, even through, even through the online streaming, oh God, and all those that were here and listening, oh God, continue to bless them. Look on those that are sick. Look on those that are shedding. Look on those that stand in need of special prayer. Just touch and look on the reed family. Continue to strengthen them in their hour of loss. And God will give your name the praise and give your name the glory and give your name the honor. We bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we do pray. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest you run about us henceforth now and forever. And all God people say amen. Amen. Remember, amen, you don't have any trouble, but all you need is faith in God. Until the next time, See you later at the Calvary. We believe every good Christian ought to come by Calvary every now and then. God bless.